welcome guys welcome back my people before we continue with our discussion let's continue subscribing liking and sharing our videos and for those who have subscribed i can't forget to appreciate you we are 7.5k subscribers road to 10,000 subscribers 10,000 subscribers so let's continue sharing the videos then uh, so that they may reach as many people as possible so let's get get back to our discussion whereby we were discussing uh, about fibroids or myomas and we were in the first type of fibroid which is called intramural fibroid so in this video we are going to discuss about the causes the causes of intramural fibroids, as we said at the start, the cause of any kind of fibroid is unknown, but it's always related to some risk factors which can predispose a person to getting this kind of a disease. So the exact cause of intramural fibroid is unknown many doctors or healthcare providers uh, believe or have the belief that fibroids develop from abnormal muscle cell i want you to get this most doctors or healthcare providers believe that fibroids develop from abnormal muscle cell in the middle this specifically for intramural fibroid so as doctors we believe that they develop from abnormal muscle cell in the middle layer of uterine wall note this when that cell is influenced by estrogen when that cell is influenced by estrogen which is the primarily female hormone, it rapidly multiplies and forms a tumor. I want you to get this. When that cell is influenced by estrogen, which is, which is the primary female hormone, the cell rapidly off, oh, it, 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 it multiplies faster. So rapidly multiplies and forms a tumor. And the tumor is what we call the myoma or the fibroid. So let's get to, to, to the symptoms or the signs or how you can tell that a person is having a intramural fibroid. So we are talking about signs of intramural fibroid. Fibroid. Generally, they have generally have symptoms similar to those of other fibroids. So this is a fibroid like any other. So the symptoms are generally similar to the ones of the other fibroids. For example, pelvic pain, low back pain. Every all extended menstrual periods, bleeding between menstrual periods with the clots. I want you to get this very clearly because most men, women have this bleeding between periods and with the clots. We have what we call pain during coitus or sex. We have increased menstrual cramping. We have increased rate of urination. I hope you get these points clearly. We have swollen abdomen, obvious because the, 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 the fibroid is getting large. The abdomen, abdomen will obviously swell. We have lower back pain. We have pressure or fullness of lower abdomen. Let's come to the diagnosis. Or how can you tell that a client or a patient is having intramural fibroids? Diagnosing this kind of uh, a fibroid involves the following. 
One, abdominal examination. Number two, pelvic examination. Number three, we can use the uh, X-ray images, imaging. We have what we call pelvic magnetic resonance scan, or what we call MRI. We have hysteroscopy. We have what we call transvaginal ultrasound, or ultrasonography. All these are aimed at confirming whether a lady is having fibroids. Our next point, let's discuss about the treatment regimens or how you can treat intramural fibroid. So, treatment of intramural fibroid involves what we call one, watchful waiting. What is watchful waiting? This is whereby a doctor will monitor your symptoms for changes and examine to see if fibroids have grown in size. I hope you get that. Watchful waiting is whereby the doctor will monitor your symptoms for changes and examine if fibroids have grown in size. Not this. If you are ben, you, if you begin to experience significant symptoms or when the symptoms become more severe, hmm, the doctor may recommend other treatment methods as follows. One, we have what we call myomectomy. This refers to surgical procedure to remove, uh, to remove the fibroid leaving the uterus intact. So here, the fibroid is removed through a surgical procedure and the uterus is left intact. Number two, we have what we call hysterectomy. This is whereby there is the removal of the entire uterus to prevent complications. You remove the whole uterus to prevent complications. Number three, we have uterine artery embolization or UAE. This is whereby there is cutting of blood supply to fibroid which aims at reducing size of the fibroid or completely eliminating the fibroid. I hope you get this. Uterine artery embolization or UAE. This involves cutting of blood supply to the fibroid aiming at reducing the size of the fibroid or completely eliminating the fibroid the fibroid next point we have what we call gonadotrophin gonadotrophin releasing hormone gonadotrophin releasing hormone Agonists. This lowers the estrogen level and triggers medical menopause. As we discussed above, estrogen is the primary female hormone. So, gonadotrophin releasing hormone agonists lowers estrogen level and triggers medical menopause. The goal is to shrink all eliminate the fibroid this marks the end of this video and in the next video we are going to discuss about uh, uh, the second type of hormone or of fibroid and i hope for those who had requested about intramural fibroid i've discussed it at large and I hope that it has helped you people. Note this, intramural fibroid are always treatable. So guys, let's continue subscribing, sharing and uh, commenting our videos and make this channel a success. Let's meet in the next video.